they're like caught. It's weird. The whole thing is weird. But I mean, it is working out, and it's worked out just fine so far. We'll go into more detail of that as we get on. Yeah. I'm just pretending we're not actually live. Oh, okay. Last week we had uh, unprofessional, we- professional. This week I'm just going to pretend we're not actually. Live. <laughs> yeah, this week I'm just not going to do the podcast. That that Twitch chat, am I right? <laughs> F them. <laughs> Content, throwing for content. That's that's <laughs> what we're doing here. Oh, oh! Thank you for reminding me by saying throwing for content. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody to the Dungeons and Downloads podcast, where we are live every week, every Thursday, starting at seven thirty, the time that matters. Eight thirty, the time that no one has. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was very undescriptive for as many words as you used. <laughs> Definitely 7.30 Pacific time. Because that's where I live. Sure. He said the time that matters. I mean, the time that matters is Eastern, let's be honest. <laughs> no other time in this world matters. Yeah, we should just be UT- you should just be UTC zero and everything should scale based off that. Oh, no, there shouldn't even be any scaling. You all just live off my time. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be very much convenient for you. Yeah, it would. You're right. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> yeah, but not everyone in America is in Eastern time. The ones that matter are. <laughs> like the president. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Congress, also <laughs> Eastern time. You're the losing me. Of the United States. You're losing me. Time. You're losing me. <laughs> Rufus, what are we talking about today? <laughs> Hopefully not <laughs> politics. Ah, oh, we're going to do some <laughs> recaps. Talk about some dragons. We have an interesting those? impossibility about Wordle that we're going to try. I'm so confused. We're going to talk about some Funkos, uh, some video games. And consoles. It'll be it'll be fun. It will be fun. I do I do think it's gonna happen. Mm. Fun things. So I guess for D D recaps. You're you're the sandwich this yeah. week. So, Sorry, I'm the middle. You're the bread, so you go first. Yeah. I'm arguably the part that people need the most. Right now, yeah. Because yeah. you can't really make a sandwich without bread. Yeah, exactly. Your fingers would get greasy you have to wet. eat it with a fork and a knife and like who eats a sandwich with a fork and a knife yeah at that point it's just a pile of meat and condiments or if yeah, you're cow well, no condiments exactly just just a pile of meat just and cheese yeah I throw cheese on my sandwiches yeah the condiments definitely don't have a lubricating effect on the bread you don't need it <laughs> just perhaps get good scrub Perhaps I'm just not good at eating sandwiches. I never really (laughs) thought of it that way. See, once again, and I'm in the time zone that matters. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, it all makes sense now. Thank you. (laughs) So, uh, which one do you want to start with? Go with Waterdeep, I guess. Uh, In Waterdeep, you guys. Let's see, where did you guys start? You started at the. At the end of the Squidly stuff. Right? And then you were following... Yes, we started at the end of the Squidly stuff, and then we followed a trail to... It was the... a forgettable episode. Not a lot happened. Not a lot happened. I mean, we got into a pretty good combat. We did some stuff. We also met Manchun. Um... Oh, yes, that's right. You guys went to the old tower and you found the ritual that was going on against the guy from the media. And that's why it was forgettable, because it was one of those combats where nothing happens for the first like five rounds. Yes, but it was an intense combat. And then afterwards, Manchun walked in and he was like, I will take that stone of galore. And it's like nothing we can do about that. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, and I have no clue where we're supposed to go from here. I'm not going to lie. I, as a as a player, I'm not a big fan of Waterdeep because I feel like I've never had any. I feel like it doesn't do a very good job of 
showing you where to go even like a little bit. Yeah. I, I think it's it's still like it's a fun campaign, but you have to be in the mindset that you're just not going to know what you're doing. There's just the too much stuff you could be doing and no indication of what's actually important. Exactly. It's one of those things where it's like, like, had you guys not done main mission the whole time, you would have met and talked to people. But there's no indication to not do it. There's a suggestion that you don't have to, but yeah. you don't need money for anything. Like, yep. I haven't seen a need for money. There is none. It's all intrigue, so, so there's no need unless, for money. Unless you wanted money. Unless there was a quest that you needed money for, there's no reason to stop and wait. Like, you just... Like, why, why pause time for a month when you could just do the quest that you already have? Yeah. I mean, you know that we're switching. We're we we actually need to probably talk in the Discord over the next uh, over like today and tomorrow, right? Because we we're supposed to run the tavern for um, until winter. Well, during that time, you guys are gonna like do stuff. Like, I won't make you skip everything because the reason we're advancing all the way to winter is just because it makes stuff easier for me. Like, technically, sure. you're only supposed to have two d six days to figure <laughs> out what to do next. <laughs> Okay. Like, and I mean that I, to figure out what to I do next. Dislike this campaign the more that I hear about the back end of it. So like, I'm excited for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but I feel like there's there it. They went for too open. They literally. Well, I feel like what they did is they were just like, hey, you know what? We have this really cool idea for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but it starts at level five. <laughs> so if we could get them up to level five. That would be really good. Oh, so what should we have them do? Whatever they want. <laughs> that's all it's been. It feels like that's all it's been. I really wish... I don't know. There's just no direction. It's... There's so much... Oh, so what if we don't figure out what to do in 2d6 days? Do we just... Is it? Is it... You don't need to tell me the condition, but is it just... It's a game over? Nope. I have to make stuff up for you to get places to deal with the consequences of it, which aren't okay. very, which like, there's no way for you not to win unless you die. Okay. So there's, we, we always win unless we die. Manchun is supposed to come in and take the stone to create intrigue. And now we have to figure out what to do. Well, yeah, the idea here. And I'm going to like kind of explain it a bit more on Friday because I don't want you guys sure. to be completely lost. The idea here now is that Manchun is just such an unstoppable force that you have to find a way to beat him. Not necessarily go fight him yourself. There's no way to... <laughs> no, but like you need the to find... The going to give us a way at some point. Like Got you it. have to find out what he fears. More or less. Like you have to find out what would cause him to leave. What would he be afraid of? If something happened somewhere else. Like, you have to orchestrate it. You have to orchestrate him away. You can't fight him. Well, I mean, you can, but you'll die. No, but like, you can't fight him. Yeah. But, like, the idea here is you have to intrigue him away. That's interesting. We'll see what happens. I'm, but like, I was going to instantly call it a dumb idea, but I'm going to let it play out before I make a, a final judgment on this but I'm, also I'm, I'm like gonna, i'm gonna he, go with an open mind because i've never heard of intriguing a boss away maybe that's maybe that he's also really like the villains aren't necessarily always in their dungeons either so if you think that maybe it's in their dungeon you could potentially go scout it out and see if you know when he comes around and if you could lift it off him somehow like there's lift it off man shoot or does he leave it with anybody else does he keep it on himself like essentially I mean, we don't even know where his dungeon is so it sounds like we have to find where it is and scout it or that's one of the ways to do it is to find where his dungeon is and well like scout it i guess what i'm saying time. is you can you can figure it out before he actually like before the 2d6 days where you ha where it's then other stuff you can still figure it out and stop it what if you roll a two that's such bullshit yeah <laughs> that that is actually bad game design you should have a day amount e in your mind even after the they book. find it it still takes them time to deal with five hundred thousand sure. gold which is another like 2d8 or something like that but it's still 2d8 you still could roll two days yeah. on both of those yeah 
I feel that's bad. Yeah, that's I know, bad that's design. Bad. Especially mm-hmm. like the fact that there's no reason not to advance time. Are you sure you want to make us advance it to winter? Yes. It does, it makes it that much easier. Well, every description I'm going to give to you is as if it's <laughs> winter time. Okay. No, that's, that's understandable. Um, but also like and you're going to For tell me what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward the time to there and then like I'll decide how many days you have to Yeah. Or either that or I'll just make sure you have whatever information you need and then roll the number of days. Well, that's, a, that's a good way to give us like the basic information. Advance the time and say we got it somehow. Like even though or we're we going to say we're trying to do something. Like stuff even though we're adv- yeah. Like I think all of next or this week is going or tomorrow. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I should maybe know this a bit better by now, but Are you um, ready? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll be ready. Um, but all of tomorrow's sessions going to be the advancement of that time. We're not just going to go bang. We're going to go like, okay, three weeks, something happens, you know, and okay. it'll be broken up a bit. It's not going to be a snap of the finger. You're instantly in winter. Next session will be us working through all of the time between now and winter. Still seems dumb. I know. It seems like they focused too much on Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Oh, yeah. Decided, like you said, just say, like, Waterdeeps, do whatever you want. The other thing I'm afraid of, I haven't started reading Dungeon of the Mad Mage yet. I'm afraid that it's also going to tie into what villain you had in this campaign, and then the season will matter again. Well, I mean, so we'll have um, we'll have a villain. Like we we already know Manchun will already be in. Windows, no, I know where you're supposed to be. Yeah, but if I didn't do that, is what I'm okay. saying. Like, I, I should probably start reading into Dungeon of the Mad Mage because we're not that far off. It seems from finishing Waterdeep. Well, I th- I think. <laughs> I have a feeling Dungeon of the Mad Mage is going to be like Waterdeep in that you can do anything at any time. I hate that. I have a feeling that's where it's going to go. Like, I think it's going to be Blinged in Stone. I think so that like, it's going to be Blinged, Blinged in Stone, Stone the campaign. Different, though. No, but like, there's a whole bunch of stuff and you can choose to do them in like any order, basically. You get a bank of sure, things. Okay, look, I, I say I'm okay with that. I don't have an issue with that. I thought you said you could just do anything anytime, like Waterdeep, because that's not true. Waterdeep, you can miss stuff. I think Dungeon of the Mad Mage is just going to be like a bunch of crazy towns inside the dungeon. And you're just going to like go in and like kill your way to the back, basically. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Sword Art Online climbing the tower stuff. Like, I think that's what this campaign's going to be. There's no way that there's enough chapters to get you to level 20 without them literally just um, finagling some level ups. Cause oh, that, yeah. Th- there's no way in one book you could technically get to tw- to 20 when, like, Out of the Abyss is a 18-chapter book, and that gets you to 14. It's going to be heavy milestones is what it's going to yeah. be. It's like going to be 18 chap or it's going to be 15 chapters for each chapter is a level. So why did you play this? Why did you decide to do this in Dungeon of the Mad Mage when you have not read the second half of this campaign? Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I've read a summary of like the story. I don't oh, okay. I don't know how it runs, but I know the story. Okay. I like the story and the lore gotcha. points on it. And I read reviews without spoilers. That's good. That's very good. I've done a lot of research, but yeah, we're still a lot of sessions away from me needing to have any of that prepped. But now is around the time I'm going to start because we've still got like minimum two or three sessions left. So I'm still like a month yeah. out from from running this. Two or three set, yeah. I mean, no, we do this every week. Yeah. So you're like. So if there's three or four sessions. Oh, yeah. That's four weeks. That's a month. month Yeah. I mean, three sessions is three weeks. So technically it's less than a month. Yeah. And like, we might take a week break in between (laughs) because well, people might want to make new characters for it. Like, I'm not going to make anyone have to continue playing the character if they don't want to. 
can we make a note to get Phil Rin some armor before <laughs> Dungeon of the Mad to, Before we get to wiz, to winter, like we can do that in our very long amount of downtime. I, I've t- <laughs> yeah. No, she does. She, you need to look. Th- you, there, she has fighters. A hundred percent always start with armor, unless you did a a janky fighter start. No, I I, like- I let her pick her equipment. Like she oh. she did it, so she might have okay. messed up. <laughs> okay, it's like she fighters a hundred percent good armor. I didn't help her with her character at all. Oh. She built it, like, all by herself, and she hadn't played D&D in, like, three or four years. It's possible armor was missed. Yeah. No, like... Wow. Gotcha. The music is yelling at me. (laughs) I'm happy that Tilburn works as well as she does, then. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was Waterdeep. Pal, tell us about Prisoner 13. It was fun. It was actually really funny. We It's a one-shot. It's a heist one-shot, and I think we have a good crew again. Um, so we swapped out one of our players, Rusty. It won't be here for three weeks. We swapped him out for Dins. I think we're going to be playing Wednesday next week yeah. so that Dins can play again, which is good. And yeah, we have a really good crew. We have a good crew. We have a good uh, uh, story. Yeah, I'm going to say I, I do enjoy Prisoner 13's general framework um you can tell it's a free i was talking to Ruth before about this and you got the very end of that when the podcast started <laughs> you can tell it's a free adventure because there are certain things missing that you just you know when you're releasing something for free you're not paying that much attention to the other adventures in this book which i need to still ask the group um you have a choice between two after this mm-hmm. um the other adventures in this book are more planned out and hmm. I think will be I, don't, I mean I think this one's still fun so I was going to say more fun but I think this one's still fun um, this one's been things. hilarious so far it's been hilarious because we have a good group <laughs> but there's um, there's just a couple of things that there isn't the details for the DM in there and I had to make it up on the spot it's one of yeah. those things where you know the guards are supposed to work for eight hours and then be in their barracks sleeping for 16 hours every day because mm-hmm. there's three shifts is what they're supposed to be. And then there is each shift does eight hours and then the 16 hours you go back to your barracks because in the barracks there's a note that says that there should be a two thirds of the guards in there at all times. <laughs> Oh my god. Which makes no sense. So when someone brought it up, I was like, yeah, you know, that actually makes zero sense. Um, (laughs) Because one of the frameworks for Prisoner, whoa, um, for Prisoner 13 is you, uh, you, so you're infiltrating a prison to either break someone out or you're you're trying to get a key from someone um, in the prison, one of the prisoners, Prisoner 13. Um, And one the two main ways or the main way to do it is to go in undercover you can either go as a cook or as a guard um so two people one as cooks two people one as guards and as far as the day-to-day activities there's a lot of random stuff that there's just holes in and in everything <laughs> cooks sleep right next to the kitchen and they work and it never says that they're supposed to leave the kitchen so the cooks technically live there. I was like, well, okay, if you're accompanied by a guard, because that makes no sense. Like, why would a cook literally for 24 hours stay in the kitchen area? Because the bunks for the cooks are right off the kitchen. Nobody um, in wherever this place is smokes confirmed. Correct. The, the, like, the cooks could break? never get a smoke break ever. <laughs> no. They're not allowed to go outside or right. to the bathroom. And like the whole guard schedule, one of our people were was asking like okay so like what's our schedules i'm like well eight hours and then i think i started to say and then you have 16 hours in the barracks and i was like that's stupid i thought that in yeah. my mind as i was saying it out loud and i was like you know actually you know so i i, I retconned a little bit and said you have eight hour work eight hours of free time where i tried to merge the idea of the guard staying in the barracks recent hours i said you have eight hours of work eight hours of free time where you have to be doing something Mm -hmm. like you have to walk with a purpose you can't just be loitering around the place um then eight hours of sleep 
Um, they also don't break up the guard into guards into different duties, <laughs> which makes no sense to me. I ended up doing that kind of off the top of my head. You actually, I realized that it makes more sense partway through for the North and the South Watch to patrol, which is why I said, oh, we're changing today. That's why the two guards came in. Because I realized, <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, that actually makes more sense. The two guards, so we had um, our two people who were playing as guards were in the north Northern Tower or the Northern area watching yep. the entrance. And I'm sitting there saying, this is just boring. They're just gonna sit there for eight hours and nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, wait a minute. It makes more sense if the guards in the North and the South patrol. So I had them patrol. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, today we're changing it now so that the guards in both area have to patrol every 20-ish minutes. So they did that. It gave them a good look at the prison and whatnot. They ended up, the cooks did seem like they had a lot less things to do because the cooks are a lot more confined. I, they don't tell you, they also don't give you Prisoner 13's schedule. They don't give you any prisoner's schedule. They say <laughs> the prisoners can do something. And it's like, what do you want from me? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but all our <laughs> shit is scheduled, right? Your shit isn't, like, like I said, technically your shit is scheduled at eight hours and then yeah. 16 hours of sleep. So That's I what had I mean, to like... also make a more intricate, I had to make an intricate schedule and then decide, okay, you know, these are when the prisoners are going to go to the courtyard to do their recreational activities. These are when this is going to happen. I had to decide all of that. It wasn't in the book at all. Mm -hmm. It just says, yeah, they can walk every once in a while. So I felt really bad for the cooks, so I ended up having Prisoner 13 go eat a meal at a certain time. And I made note of when the prisoner, like, I'm making notes as I'm making those things happen of what time they would do that so mm. that it's consistent. But I'm having to kind of make it up on the spot. That's yeah, so nice. dumb that you have to make it up. Yeah, you end up having to, like, make up all the finer details of a heist, which is not fun to do. As It's like, hey, happens. here's a heist adventure. You write the heist. <laughs> there's a picture in there's a picture in the book of a character meeting prisoner 13 a prisoner 13 is in her cell and i'm like there's no way there's no way that that picture could ever happen because <laughs> there are guards constantly monitoring the cells in the surveillance panopticon in the center so like i don't think they even read their own adventure <laughs> But yeah, it's it's been great. Like, it's been hilarious. We have a lot of good character back and forth. Um, we have a Boop Snoop McBoople Stoot counter because one of them has a crazy name. It was a crowdsource character. Essentially, people, it was Rufus and uh, Iskra <laughs> came up with this. We were both inebriated at the time. And they made a great character who is a potter. I'm really happy that we have this new lore that he's essentially a aggressive marketer as well. <laughs> just constantly sends out magazines to everyone. It's great. And yeah, like there's. It's been really. I'm happy we have the comedy we do because it makes up for me having to make so many things up on the spot. It makes everything better. Um, See, I think where the big difference is, like, why this group runs so well is because we're not really playing D&D &D at all. No. We're just all RPing our character and shit is happening to us. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's great. It's very different. There's two ways to play D&D. &D. There's when you play D&D &D, and when you everyone just RPs their character to the nth degree and things yeah. happen to them. All four of you are RPing greatly and then I'm just making things happen around the prison. Like... I'm adding in patrol routes. I'm adding in the prisoner going to go do stuff. Like the goblin wasn't specifically supposed to be in the courtyard, but I was like, they're checking out the courtyard. Let's throw that in there. You guys were literally just RPing and doing your thing and things are happening. I, I don't, I know that's, I'm, I usually have my cursor hidden, but like I am actually, yeah, if I recorded my view, I'm actually going around the prison constantly and moving the tokens around just in case you <laughs> run into one of the tokens. <laughs> I'm doing I'm trying to, like, make it as close to an actual heist with, like, the, to feel like the prison is alive and not just going around you guys. Um, 
And yeah, so like you guys met Prisoner 13. One of the big things is that she doesn't want to leave, which is the original plan was to try and break her out. She was like, I don't want to leave. I just want some information from the warden's office. Um, so you guys did, you, you got essentially your, your quest. You finally found what you guys need to do there <laughs> or what like one of the main things are near the end. And that was going to the warden's office. And you met the warden, which just has like I, I think it's kind of a random cool addition the warden is just possessed <laughs> there you go that's it i i wanted to be very clear about whether or not her memories were shared right because you didn't know whether she would come back or not and yeah because it's like hey maybe we can get real good information from drunky <laughs> right Awesome. It's like a free charm person at that point if she doesn't remember it. <laughs> it could be. We'll see what happens. I know that the current plan and the, the thread inside of the, the threadception that you guys have going. <laughs> the Prisoner 13 thread. That you, uh... At least Dins' plan is to go minor illusion the key to essentially change into the warden minor illusion the keys and then go up to the office and see what happens that's one of the plan oh man i love how definto is the high charisma character yeah it's great no, i mean it's great you have a high charisma you have two people with high raven's pretty high charisma as well you guys yeah he plays as if he's talk. high charisma though yeah <laughs> Definto does not. <laughs> yeah, Definto is just like people just believe him because he's a computer. Is how I've chalked it up in my head. Yeah, I mean he wouldn't point. he wouldn't unlock lie on purpose, right? Because so there's a computer. yeah, there's no reason not to believe what he would say by default. So the next two I'm gonna put in chat that you have a choice from which you should look forward to potentially at the end of Wednesday. We might hop into it and get that rolling. Yeah. Um, if not, then it'll just be, we might not finish it, but we'll do it the week afterwards. The next two, let me, let me bring up the names so that you can, you can get a good, a good, good sort. Yeah. So I can Google the adventure and read them both to decide which one I want to play. <laughs> so you have talk, Talkworth's Clockworks, which is a, Underdark Adventure, where you're attempting to take back a Deep Gnome village. And then you have Masterpiece Imbroglio, which is where you're trying to heist something from a rival thieves guild. So my question would be, like, gameplay wise, are they both the same? I think one is slightly more combat. And one is a little bit more sneaky. They're, these heists actually play relatively deep. Um, don't play that similar. They, play, they have enough nuances. Because like that bad. would be the like as far as like I I think I'd rather decide based on something like that because I think so. None of them none of them play like the one you're playing right now. Okay, that that's actually good enough for me. Because I just I if there's multiple I wouldn't want to play the same type of heist back so this to back. Is full, well, these are all like full. They're not. Um, so they don't play the same as far as like you're not planning how to get to someone and talk to someone and do all that. Yeah. Your your goal is a lot more straightforward. You don't. It's not like you need to find a key and that's it. But you don't know what the key is and you don't know like whether you can easily get the information or not. It is. You know what you have to do. You have to plan out how to get there. You still need to try and be sneaky, even yeah. for retaking the town. But there is a little bit... There's there's more straightforwardness. Um, there is still just as much with both of those um, a variety, depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do. As but long yeah. as they're both different from what we just did. Because like I said, if there was different. one, like, you know, like rob a bank, rob a convenience store, it's like, well, they're... Okay. You know what I there, mean? There's no, there's also no breaking in. Like you don't have to do, there's actually, I guess you can do some disguise work when you're going into the prison. Oh, no, not the prison. When you're going into the rival thieves guild, but there's no, I mean, there's no disguise work in the, 
um, Underdark. So mm. it's right there. It's different. And okay. then there is, I mean, the Thieves Guild is even very different. Cool. Because the Thieves, both of them, you aren't given a, a flashy map for either of them. You're given maps, but they're different. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit less information on them. It's not like there's more figuring stuff out. Okay. On both of those, which I think is will make it flow a little bit differently. There is also, and because there's more th- figuring stuff out, I feel like there's more things that could go wrong as well. Yep. There's not a lot that can go wrong in Prisoner 13 unless you're trying to be stupid about it. Yeah. Um, it's very straightforward. Like talking about wanting to get a job as a criminal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like just straight up saying that. Um, but oh, yeah, he was definitely going to go, that was sarcasm. Prisoner Prisoner 13 is much more straightforward. It's a free adventure. It's supposed to like kind of give you an okay look at what's in the rest. And then looking at any of these other adventures, they're a lot more planned out. And also they're a lot more... There's a little more diversity in the ways you can do things. Are they the same like, level? They're both level five, yeah. Okay. That's why I'm letting you choose between the two. So you use the same characters, and we just go over. Yep. With that, I. They there's a suggestion for Prisoner Thirteen. There's rules set up for if you guys just wanted to, you know, smack the like, slam on the back door of the prison, and just be like, hey, let us in. As yourselves. There's a whole yeah. whole scenario how that plays out, but I don't know how the players are supposed to think of that one. Like, they're given all this information, and then they're just going to say, oh, we can just go in the back door, and it's fine. Well, yeah, my, my question would be, like, why would they talk to us at all? Right. Well, I mean, there's something that... There, there are reasons that they might talk to you. You could try and convince them that, you know your lost adventures or whatnot and you need a place to stay because it's so cold like there's there's ways to make it work but who's gonna do that i'm not really under the impression that they're compassionate you know right i mean so it's possible they would just kick you out or yeah. maybe they would like i think the only one that's been even remotely like normal with you is actually the warden yeah everyone else has been like you guys are grunts yeah and the warden's like, you guys is special. I see something <laughs> in you guys. Maybe it's just the potter. <laughs> God damn, I spend a lot on pottery. <laughs> my drunken, my drunken polter guy, my uh, drunken possessed dwarf. It, the dwarves a lot of pottery. The drunken dwarf, fucking <laughs> drunk, one click buy Amazon's all of his pottery. <laughs> But that's all I got for Prisoner 13. I'm excited to see how it ends and going into the next one. Do you have, what, what would you say off of the two would be the next, would be the one you'd uh, go for? The Underdark one or the Rival Thieves Guild? Rival Thieves Guild, just cool. because we're we're already doing stuff in the Underdark. Right, that's why I wanted it to be a choice to see if you guys wanted to do a, a oh, this is cool because it's like the same place we were doing the other one, or whether you'd be like, yeah, I want something different. Because of how long Out of the Abyss is, <laughs> I, I get that. We're, we're gonna you be want to do the rival. Yeah, yeah. in the Underdark forever. That because you'll be dead again. Oh yeah, we're not. We're we're gonna die for sure. Yeah, I don't understand. Niskra sound very confident that you guys are totally fine where we left off last time. Yeah, I didn't get that impression at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give the oh someone had a really low stealth roll so they triggered something and uh it made some sound yeah no we're done for like this is bad <laughs> this is gonna be bad yeah it's not gonna be good but uh, so, but that's a couple weeks off we'll see how that yeah. goes a couple weeks from now how was uh okay so that, that's it for prisoner 13 recap horde of the dragon queen Court of the Dragon Queen, v character was introduced and realized that he had his half-brother had a half-brother that wasn't related to him at all. I loved that. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. <laughs> it's great. So they're bond they're both bonding over the death of their half-brother, who was Mega. Mega died. And uh so that was cool. And then uh <laughs> Leosin heals up. 
over a couple of days and he says, hey, I want you guys to go back to the cultist camp and sneak into the cave in the back and see what's up in there. And uh, you guys did that. And you guys did one of the stupidest things that's just legit in the campaign, no way around it. You killed Cyan Wrath. There was no reason not to. We we ended up scouting. In Even if you didn't. We were, we were pretty methodical about it. Like we scouted in the cave. We took our time. We made sure to go bit by bit. And then we, we came up on, well, there's Cyan Wrath. And then we had someone in the party that wanted revenge on Cyan Wrath. So but, it's like, we're going to kill him. But here's the thing. Let's say you didn't. Let's say you never you went said into... He didn't, you, you said he never comes back again. Yeah. It doesn't even matter yeah. if you don't. <laughs> he they is make him be such a big character and they're like, yeah, you can just kill him or leave him. It doesn't matter. He is never mentioned again. Except in like maybe other people's like notes or journals. But like he never... The character never comes back. There may be mention of him, but the character never comes back. That's such big. So like it's like yeah it doesn't matter kill him kill him who that, cares that's why it was like lightning breath does 40 10 damage and a 30 foot 5 foot line i could hit everyone except march hair in one hit and kill them all uh and then i'd run on a character who's never coming back <laughs> and is in <laughs> after this combat is just not a part of the campaign anymore. Yeah. I could TPK them with that. Or because he's going to kill who like, if he downs he's you all, gonna he's going to finish you yeah. all. If he gets you all down, I don't think he would have downed everyone, but like there's a good chance. Well, if he, he did multiple fire, he could have just kept on spamming that. How, how do they? Why did they give him five uses of that? Or it might have been recharge five. I think I told okay. you that wrong. I think it's recharge okay. five. So I don't think he. Down but even so, there, but he would down afterwards. He would kill someone. At least he would kill if, one. If person. he managed to get everyone down, he would finish the job. Is what I'm getting right. at. If he managed to, like if everyone failed that deck save, and then yeah. he rolled max damage, that would put all three of those guys down. Yeah. And then all he would have to do is take the dodge action for five turns. Yeah. That'd be it. Like. An intelligent creature like that is that ruthless. I so, don't understand why he exists. If it's literally just like he doesn't. I don't know. It's like one of so, those things where there's no consequence. Like there's no not no consequence, but he doesn't have any depth to it. It's just, he He's there. I think the reason is just because like the fact that you see him in a 1v1 and he downs somebody like definitely just does at level one or even level two nobody's 1v1ing cyan wrath correct i think the point is to be like shit we killed him at level three how hard is level eight you know like he murdered us in level one and now we kill him. It's only going to get. I think that's what they were trying to do is like show you that early on, you, like you weren't really fighting anything that hard. It, but that, that's one of those things where it's like, I feel more powerful than ever. Like you just makes this. It just make people feel like they're overpowered at that point. Kind of. Yeah. That, yes. That's in better words. They want you to feel that way. It's the first adventure, right? Okay. They want you to feel strong and powerful and beyond everything for a little while. And this is, I, th I think, is their way of, like, they pound you down with this enemy who orchestrated something. Seems like he's going to be, like, the big bad of the whole and thing. Kill him. And then <laughs> you guys are so powerful that you're able, like, for us as someone who knows what's really going on, it kind of sucks. But yeah. I think the intent <laughs> there is to make the player feel so powerful that they're willing to march into whatever comes next. Okay. I, I don't think it comes off that way, but I think that's what they not. I think that's what they oh, that's intended. Yeah, I can see that. Otherwise, yeah. I have no idea. Like, I can't fathom another reason why they would do that. Yeah, it makes really no sense. Um, but yeah, I feel like that cave was fun. We had yeah. a good, good. We have a good group. I am going to say there's more stuff in there. Yeah, um, I know that there'll still be more things, possibly some more enemies. Definitely, there's a dragon's den. So there could be a dragon still left in there. Who knows? 
Yeah, who knows? Just, it is. It is this is a campaign about dragons, so. And you guys all saw what the map was named, so. Yeah. It was named yeah. Dragon Hatchery. We have a very interesting group of not a lot of morals. <laughs> but yeah, not not like heartless or anything. We just <laughs> don't have a paladin or anything like that. That's like good in life. You, you don't have a, somebody with a strong moral compass. Correct. I think that's more what it is. It's not that you're neutral or even evil. I'd say you're on like the good side of neutral as a party. I guess. I mean, Marker just kind of does whatever. Yeah. But he, that's what I <laughs> mean. Asked, like the good I mean, side of like, neutral. You can tell he's not evil because he also asked before putting down the one to sleep is like, is there anything yeah. you want to do? It, that, that's what like I mean. I just he, showed up. Yeah. He's not even really neutral either. He's good leaning neutral. I mean, he's definitely on the neutral side. I, if he's able to kill someone in his sleep, I think someone who's good, maybe having to be chaotic good might be okay, but... Like, I was going to say, like, he's chaotic neutral leaning towards good, because, Yeah, like, so I have him as a chaotic neutral alignment, but, yeah, I am trying to play more towards good. Because people yeah. tend... I think people get trapped by chaotic neutral by thinking... By almost playing evil with it. And they I just play like the that. Joker. That's what yeah, people think chaotic evil is. That's, that's not... not it's not, but yeah, people will people will go chaotic oh, sorry, neutral. And sorry, then, they say the Joker is chaotic yeah. neutral. Yes, yeah, sorry, right. chaotic evil is more than is the Joker. Yeah, yeah, that's the Joker. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I, I'd rather play chaotic neutral slightly more towards the good, because it's like you're playing the neutral line and you can do things that seem almost a little bit. Yeah, you do a lot of morally gray things, but you still try and lean towards being, you know, a decent I, person. I also don't understand the people who are like, oh. Chaotic neutrals Deadpool. No, Ned he's like neutral evil or lawful evil. Deadpool like Deadpool's He's not chaotic neutral. Evil. He's the, the okay, he's the evil leaning side of neutral. Yeah. No, I think he's pure neutral, but he's leaning closer to neutral evil. And he's lawful. He's lawful neutral, I think. Leaning towards evil lawful evil. Like I think he sticks to his own code. Yeah. There's nothing chaotic about what he does. That's firmly how he believes. Yeah. So I guess lawful neutral. That's what I that's my yeah. stance. Lawful okay neutral. I can see that. But But yeah. That, that was so, that was my idea of Spaguglio as well. Lawful neutral. He he had a code. He had a code that he liked to look out for himself, but it's still a code. He had his oh, own did code. I ever, did I ever tell you that there was a line the shadow didn't say? If no. Mega had asked. So like when the shadow said specifically that Praxis wasn't supposed to die, if Mega had asked, but what about Spooglio, he would have been like, Spooglio never should have been in the party anyway. Oof. That's why he died. <laughs> well, because he's like, he literally, like there's a party of people meant to be like, take the moral high ground after the end of time and like lead people <laughs> afterwards. He would have been fit in that. <laughs> So, no, yeah. no, he doesn't. But Mega didn't ask about it, so he didn't, he didn't think it was smart to say the line. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Not if he's trying to not fight us. Right, he was like trying to not fight. He made a specific note that Praxis wasn't supposed to die. I was talking to Nick about it. Because he's still not 100% sure what Gruzik's going to do. And I'm very interested to see. I don't want... This is how I'm going to play it on Sunday. I don't want him to tell me what he's going to do until it gets to his initiative. You hear that? Don't type it in board. chat. I see you yeah, there. Because he's around. Yeah. Don't 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 tell us. Don't tell us. I don't want to know until it gets around. Because we're rolling initiative immediately, and then whether people want to fight or not fight is up to them on their initiative count. I don't want anyone to have any information. Because if we know which way he's leaning, someone might try and pay him before he even starts his initiative, and I don't think that that would be correct. So, oh, Dennis isn't going to try to pay him. Dennis doesn't right. even know that anybody else is in the room right now. He doesn't even know that Creallis is up there right now. Well, I mean, he would have seen Creallis. No, no, but stab. he's he's looking like this. Well, right. The, essentially, he, like we're going to it's we're in vision. The, <laughs> we're running it. Um, the shadow and Creallis have the first round and then we go into round two with everyone else doing whatever they want. Because Creallis and the shadow just had a 
a moment. I have a very literal blinder up. I don't see her at all. Yeah. yeah. I, she's in vision. Does not compute. <laughs> you don't see. Yeah. No, I'm interested. We're, I'm interested to see how that goes. Because there is specifically a potential. Well, what I was saying is I was talking to Nick about it. And he wouldn't know. He, he said he didn't even know if Praxis would have gone against the Shadow. After the Shadow said he wanted to help kill Asmodian. That would have almost been enough for Praxis to not attack. Because Praxis had a thing for Asmodian, like he wanted to kill him. Oh, I'm telling you, Dennis would have 1v1'd him. He didn't oh, care. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like I understand that. Um, but it was interesting, like thinking back on how that character would have also just potentially not. That would have been hilarious if the two new guys just didn't participate. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like Trinix will probably still participate. He's done enough with the party, and I feel like he wants to defend if he sees the shadow attack. No, I mean, if Praxis and Trinix took a stance and said no, and it was just like the yeah. original party, he's like, that's okay, you guys weren't here. You don't understand, <laughs> whatever. I mean, Mega wasn't part of the was part of the original party, and he almost stepped down. But he, like, the second... I, I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want anyone to confirm, except I know exactly what Dennis would do. I don't want anyone yeah. else to confirm until initiative, they hit initiative. I'm 100%, I'm 100% sure, though, that Mega, the second that Kraus attacks, is going to attack. Like, there's too much between those two characters for Mega to be like, Kraus, you're doing something wrong. Don't do this. He's going to be like, oh, well, fuck. Okay. I'm going to do really stupid things next combat. That's fine. Oh, my Not God. I wanted to look up something. So, the Shadow is based off of a specific... Lich. <laughs> <laughs> it's a modified lich, yes. I needed to see something. Okay, we're good. Because there are certain... I'm not going to say what it is, but there are certain things that have specific... Do we have the book? What book? Of, of memories? memories? Yeah. I actually don't remember if Kralis had it or Kiva had it. Do we absolutely need it? The Book of Memories? Yes. No, no. no. Okay. It's not a phylactery. Confirm. I already think I confirmed he's not a lich. He's based off of it for the stats because it's the easiest thing to base it off of, but I yeah. already confirmed he's not a lich. He, that doesn't mean he's not mechanically a lich. Oh, no. I mean, I wouldn't make it. <laughs> he's a dragon. A drag lactery, Whatever. He's a dragon. <laughs> I already confirmed that. But yeah, there are just certain things, certain higher end things have um, that I haven't really played with have specific condition immunities and damage immunities mm -hmm. that I I needed to look up because I don't want people to be like, oh, well, you just tack that on because you know our party can X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, I didn't make it so that you guys couldn't beat it. That's literally just what's already on there. Mm hmm. Makes sense. That's all. That we got this. Is all. I mean, like, like even the shadow said that there's a good chance you beat him. He'll kill someone. There's a there's a, a very good chance that at least one. It'll of be me going to die. It'll we'll be see. me. No, we'll see what no, it'll be me. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'm going to do really <laughs> stupid things on Sunday. Like, I don't understand. It's in character things that Dennis would do, but I'm going to protect others above myself during that oh, combat. Okay, that's and I'm going to end up expending all of my resources very early, and right. then I'm going to die. I I am aware of this. <laughs> it's possible. We'll have to see what happens. I'm fairly certain it uh, it's going to be me. We will see, though. I mean, it could also be more than one person. It could be. There's also the small chance that it ends up being a almost TPK and then someone backs out and sides with the shadow. But yeah, it won't be me twice. I can tell you that much. Yeah, it's it's possible that like two or three people end up backing out if someone one or two people die. Like it, it's well, we'll we will see what happens. There's like many different ways. This technically, <laughs> technically Sunday could be the end of the campaign. 
Yeah, Dennis is going to fight to the death. So like, either we kill but, him or I die. <laughs> so he's not balanced to TPK, but my God, if you guys roll the way you guys have been rolling sometimes, some of these games, some of these, oh, we're uh, just, oh yeah, no, he's like dead. Yeah, he's he's balanced to be a very difficult encounter because he's one of the big bads of this campaign. If not really, he's the big bad. Um, I'm honestly so, just hoping that I can get all of my stunning strikes to eat really. <laughs> Like force him to eat them all really early, and then what just you see? like fifteen or sixteen. Well, like get him to eat all his legendary resistances early. If that they roll as bad as they've been rolling, I don't. I wouldn't get your hopes up for every one of them, but there's chances that he could at least eat like one or two of them. I'm gonna make him work for it. That's for sure. Yeah. Like first turn, I'm probably gonna try to stunning strike three three times in a row, and that'll be like four key points right there. If I even have that many left right now. Yeah, what do you guys? You guys are having some interesting. Uh, you guys, you are you guys are not going at this with full uh, full everything. No, it's not good, man. Well, that was actually oh, like. I oh made, wait, no, I, made I got ten key look. points. We're good. Okay, we're good. I did make the dungeon specifically to have used a good amount of resources, and maybe it's so that you aren't at full resources out in this fight. But, uh... It's all there for a reason. I've only got, like, three turns worth of resources, so... Yeah! Yeah. yeah. sure that'll be fine. Are you ready I'm to sure try this impossible challenge, Cal? I'm sure only, like, one or two of you are gonna die. It, yeah, um, someone other than me will die. <laughs> you might not even die. Who knows? That would be ideal, but I don't see it happening. Anyway, impossible challenge. Okay, Den is living. Got it. So I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll put I'll put this on the screen. So turn off the screen, Cal. Don't don't look it's at the, not on. Don't look at. Don't okay, worry. Good. I'm looking at the screen. I'm lying. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. I've got this wordle here. And Cal's not gonna look at it. You haven't done today's Wordle, have you? You no, don't. I haven't done Wordle. I don't. I don't play Wordle. I did it in the very beginning, but I haven't done it in like since it really became popular. It definitely since like I haven't played it since the New York Times had it. So it's been a while. Anyway, Cal, uh, I, I can't just outright tell him whether or not he got all the letters. I have to just like try to explain to him what the situation is, and he's going to guess the words. Like a five-letter word would be cool. Any five-letter word. Any five-letter word for me to guess? Yeah. What's it about? Like, what? Can you give me a category? Or no, anything? there's... The the way it works is it The way the whole game works is it's going to show me what letters are in the correct position. Uh-huh. And, uh... Like an actual five-letter word. Yeah, any five-letter word you can possibly really think of, and you're gonna want to pick one There's that doesn't. There's things. One that doesn't repeat letters would be ideal. There's even more things. That uh, would actually narrow it down, but yeah. Um, see, this is you've already got me. Like, I don't even yeah. know. I don't even know what's happening. I do know what's happening. I'm lying. Um, nope, that repeats letters. See, everything I'm thinking of now repeats letters. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. You shouldn't have said anything. This is going to take forever. Yeah. I mean, we can keep doing the podcast while we do this. We don't have to stop no. everything. <laughs> um, That's not actually a word. I mean, like... I'm like looking at my desktop for five letter words. So like here, here's the kind of stuff I'm going to be saying you. Well, if it's not true, it's maybe false. Yeah, we could use false. Sure. So, I mean, the last letter was pretty good. And the second one could use improvement, but the rest of it's kind of trash. A false. So the E was good and the second was so the E and the S. What do you mean? the? What do you mean could use improvement? It's not. It doesn't look like it. it's probably in the right spot. Oh, but it's somewhere. So the but it, E but was it, good, but the S could be. But the, the, second letter, the second letter. The second letter. You said the second letter was good. 
No, the last letter was good, and the second one we should maybe think about moving oh, around. So E and A. So it's five. It's five letters. It's a five-letter word that ends in E. Oh god! Isn't there a lot of those? And there might be an A. There, there's an A in it somewhere. Um. Nope. That's six. Um, See, I get the benefit of knowing I. It, it tracks what letters we put in that were wrong. I have the benefit of seeing this, which is why I'm only going to kind of give you the the terrible part. No, that's not a word. An E. I just got to make you I'm, say the word. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to solve this. I know. Um, I'm just bad at word games, which is why I never played Wordle. Let's go with... Hmm. Well, let's just guess another word that ends in E. And let's not even care about the A. Let's go with five letter word that ends in E. Yeah, we we're great at this, you know. Is naive a five letter word? No, no but the A is in the second. Are you sure? It is, but the A is in the same spot, so it doesn't matter. Hmm. The A is wrong. Let's go. Um, what Dave. do you do with water? You drink it. <laughs> we could just try to knock some letters off the board and guess that. No, but like, what about like state that has both of those? It's five letters. It's at the end. The A moves. Sure. It does. Repeat. Same situation. The A is still in the wrong spot. Yeah. So I don't think there's any. Is there any five letter words that end? In there's got to feel like the A has to be in the beginning. There's got to be it? something that keeps the doctor away that we could use. Apple. Here. That's actually literally what I was going to say. <laughs> Because the A has to be So, the that's... We don't have any new letters to work with yet. But it's still A and the E are in the right spot? Yep. Uh, was it it? What is there anything else that starts with an A or an E? That's five letters. Hmm. This is going to be... Well, what do we have to do? Um, hmm. Oh, how do I ask this question? Um. I think I know it. Um, what do we do with laws? We, what? as citizens, we're laws? supposed to laws abide, abide. That yeah. Yeah. The B is in the right spot. There's, so there's A, B, E, and then there's two more... Yeah, two letters that we haven't guessed yet. A bow? No, D. A bow doesn't work, because the D is wrong. About? That doesn't end in E. That's right. Just do it anyway. No, don't actually do it. Please don't do it. Um... <laughs> Oh, a boot. No. <laughs> you're you're so close. <laughs> um, um, let's see. Oh, I'm wrong. It's 
We're right on top of it, though. Yeah, it's A, B, something, something, E. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know why, these used to be easier. Um... Oh no, what happened? What? Where did I go? There we go. Hmm. I bet it's a word. I wonder if it's a word that's like actually used like <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and it has. What? Oh man. We could, well, let's just get let's just get some letters off the board. Let's let's pick a word that has letters that we haven't used yet. Like if you're not oh, right, you're uh, No, no, but like above Actually, is something that came to mind? Yeah, you're probably right. You're right. You got it. <laughs> Cal couldn't see the wordle screen everybody. Now I can. <laughs> Above. Interesting. I was hoping I would get it significantly quicker than you, and then I would be able to ask really good questions. That was my hope. Oh. That didn't work at all, though. Well, it's like, what's AB? It had to be ABO. Is there any other, like, because abide isn't it, so it has to be ABO, because I don't think there's anything else that comes after AB in a word, is there? E? Is there an A-B-E word? Oh, probably. A, da, 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 da. Good luck finding it, though. Let's look up a Scrabble, uh, I guess it Scrabble word a. finder. It could have been A as well. Abate is a word. Abuse. Yeah. Okay, so those are both well, we know Well, we were already... We couldn't use S. We knew S oh, that's was right, out of there. We couldn't use S, so I guess abate... Um, was one. No, we, T was already ruled out. Okay, so it literally had to be it had to be an A B O word then. Abode yeah. could have been the no, other one. No, D was already ruled out. It had oh. to be above. It had to be above. Okay. There was like <laughs> that was the only word left. We did that means we actually did good. The fact that we ruled out so many possible Everything. answers yeah. in in four guesses is good. That is good. That is very good. Well, look at us. We did stuff. Yeah, now we got now we got to download some things. I don't think I can do that. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Digital content, bro. Digital content, bro. Funko Pops. <laughs> Which is physical content. <laughs> <Yep>. Man. <laughs> it's not the I'm same thing at all. Hundreds of thousands of its pop culture inspired figurines into the garbage. Yeah, Proof is what's happening. But my Funko Pops. That I mean, I don't own. that's honestly where I thought most of them were for. Yeah, got them. <laughs> so their stock got really, really bad. Um, it says that they their plans. In the recent earning call, filled with so much bad news that its stock price fell off a cliff the next day. Then they just started throwing out Funko Pops. They had almost 250 million in inventory, which is 48 percent more than they had last year. That means sales no went buying Funko Pops. I love how the article's worded that way, and not that they went down 50% in sales. That means they either decided that they needed 50% more or <laughs> what, what likely happened is people stopped buying them. It's possible that they decided they just didn't want, they, they want, they expected people to buy more so that they made 50% more and then it just didn't pan out. Cause yeah. no one buys Funko Pops. 
Yeah, this includes inventory that the company intends to eliminate in the first half of 2023 to reduce fulfillment costs by managing inventory levels to align with our operating capacity of the district of the distribution center. So they had think of it. So what they're saying is they had so much inventory that it was costing them money to maintain the inventory. Yep. So they're dumping the inventory so they don't need to have to staff so many people because they don't sell that much stuff. Yep. That's crazy to me. It's expected to result in a write down in the first half of 23 of approximately 30 to 36 million dollars. Yeah, so they're going to write off 36 million of income on their taxes. Nope. Nice. That's why they're doing it, because they can do that now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't understand why the people had so many of them. Like, to me, they weren't a very good collectible because they all looked the same. Like, they were really yeah. shitty versions of what they were supposed to be. Yeah, I and agree. Like, there's so many better ones. Like, I, just... let me make sure that I got the company right here. Yeah, Nendoroid. They make like high quality better Funkos. They're kind of more like anime chibi art than Funkos, I guess is a better way to put it. Well, I mean like, okay, so people who are actual collectors might buy them because, you know, whatever their like, reasons, but like, also like Funko Pops have always been a, Funko Pops have always been a, like, we're gonna buy the rare ones and then sell them for more kind of market. Take, take a look at, uh oh, that's not the right browser. Hold on. Hold on, chat. I'll show you guys what we's looking at. Nendo Void Hunter. Yeah, this is a Monster Hunter. Um, this is like their version of a Funko. Like, that's cool. Sure. That's way cooler than a Funko, in my opinion. I agree. Like, I could see people collecting this. Sure. Those Those look cool. I mean, you also just don't have to. Oh, yeah, you don't have to, but, like, this, in my opinion, is something worth collecting. It seems like it's a, a decent quality, yeah. But, like, not only that, like, I be So, like, they all kind of look a bit different. Like, if I go, like... Let's see. Here's a Cuphead one. Those look different, for sure. They look, they look different enough. That is. And they also look like the thing they're trying to look like. It's yeah. not just like Funko draws a mug man on their square head character. Yeah. No, like, that's that's true. It looks different enough and correct enough. So, like, I, I just I don't understand why people would want to. Sometimes you just like generic things because you never know. Yeah. Maybe it'll be rare one day and then people are going to start buying it up. I guess this some people rare. Funko. No, no, I, I like your first one better. Some people are just basic bitches. It's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Oh. You can love yeah. big pens. It's okay. I don't like but Why are you? I don't like I'm just saying some people are basic. I feel like you were trying to attack me there. No, not you. You is in no, I know. the proverbial I know. you. But uh, I not me, though. I have a pen preference. I, do, I, I, do, I, I, I have I, a fine point pen that I really, 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 really like. These are... This is my favorite pen, Cal. Because I've never learned how to use a fountain pen. This is the Precise V5RT from Pilot. Ooh. Awesome nice. pen. As someone who used to need pens for work, and now I don't because I work from home. Not anymore. Are you still working from home? Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Hey, the world's but. currently pushing as much as it can away from that, and I don't know why. Love that pen. This guy gets it. Um... And if that's not enough, so like, yeah, I have, I have like six or seven of these, which I know what you're thinking. I have a million pens. Some people do, but I don't know. I, I have like six or seven really good pens and then I that just buy refills. That wasn't what them. I was thinking. I need to actually get other pens because I don't, I've been losing my pens. I guess I don't do that. I don't do, I don't, my name is Rufus. I don't lose my pens or anything like that. No. When you if you if you spend money on a pen, you won't lose it. 
That's true. If you spend if you either. spend like a dollar a pen, you're probably not gonna care that much. But like true, if, if you start paying like three dollars a pen, you're not just gonna you're not gonna leave it somewhere. You're gonna be like, I'm taking that back with me because I, don't I use pens enough to buy ones that I really care about. That see, that's why I buy good pens. So like I keep one use, in my car. Enough, yeah. I keep one in backpacks. Like I keep them in places and they always go back there. I have a few cheapo pens and those get lost, but I typically never have to use them because I'm prepared and have a pen when I need one and not when I don't. Yeah. I don't just keep them everywhere because I may need them, I guess. I have them in specific spots. Resident Evil has pens in it, I'm sure. <laughs> There's probably at least some on the desks. Yeah. That's Resident Evil 4. The remake's coming out soon, right? Is it? It's got to be at the bottom of this article. There's got to be a release date, right? There's no way they... Nope. Okay, I'll go... Myself. I wonder how long they can keep remaking their games until they don't make any more money on the remakes. I'm guessing this is the last one they can do before people will stop no buying them. No one liked them. 5 or 6, so... Yeah. Well, people liked 5 a little bit, but no one liked 6, so there's like, no way. They're it, making... I mean, they're making them money off... Well, this is the first way I'm playing Resident Evil 4 is the thing. This is the first Resident Evil game I'm going to play. It looks really good. Um, like this is the only one they should have remade, in my opinion. Oh, I, I. So the only reason I disagree is I think two was a fantastic enough remake that it was worth it. Like, I, I, also, also once again, that was the only the only way I have played two and three have been the remake one as well, but one wasn't a full remake. One was more of a remaster. But Resident Evil two and three, I think that it was good enough for a remake because that's the way I played it. Like I'm biased towards it because that's the only see, way I played it. I feel like. Two or what was it? One and two. How many did they remake at this point? Is it did they do one, two, three, and four? March twenty fourth. Well, one was one was a remaster. It was not a full remake. You still had tank controls and for, all that stuff. For the purpose two. of what I'm about to argue, it's a re. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so one and sure. two. Did they do three? They did three. Yeah. Okay, so if they were, I don't think that one, two, and three had the following that four had. I think two did. Okay, if two did... I think if you were going to say that, then two and four should have... If, okay. if this is your argument, then two and four should have been remade, and that was it. My argument I, is that they're doing it I at this point that for three, money. That three did not need to be remade. I'm happy it was, because I was able to buy it and play it. I had a, I got a big bundle of all the... Because um, Humble Bundle did a big bundle for Resident Evil games. Yeah. The only thing it didn't include, I think, was Village. Okay. Um... And I got all of them in a bundle that was really cheap. So I didn't feel like I was spending a lot on it. I feel like if I was someone that was buying them on release, then yeah, I feel like it would be like I was losing my money. Mm -hmm. They were really good remakes, though. Like, if two was I, as highly regarded as four, then I would say two and four were the only two that needed to be remade. I feel like two was but. considered an extremely good Resident Evil. Um, four, of course, was considered the best, which... I don't think that four holds up in its older version. As much as people say, like I had a crash that ended up ending the game. It felt really janky the entire time no, but with its kind of cross between tank controls. See here, Ashley is also apparently terrible. So I'm happy they're remaking it to like. Here's the thing, issues. though. Resident Evil Four came out on GameCube. Right, like I understand so, that the PC port of Resident Evil Four I was playing was yeah, a PC port of a GameCube game. And it was bad. The big thing that, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, one thing I saw recently is somebody, and this is, this really pissed me off, but anyway, somebody did a review of the Tales of Symphonia remaster and gave it a really low score, not because it's a bad port, but because he felt the gameplay didn't stand up today. Did they change the gameplay or anything at all? No, they, they the didn't old... say they did. It's it's the same thing they did on PS2. They're just bringing it forward so people can experience it. Sure. Because it's on Steam, it's now on Switch kind of thing. They've... I hope they eventually release another Tales game. I like Tales of Arise Me too. A lot. But the dude gave it a bad... He gave the remaster a bad review because Tales of Symphonia, the game for GameCube, doesn't hold up today. No, I 100% agree <laughs> it's like, that that's stupid. So, like, for I Resident Evil 4, that. like, 
the GameCube version was amazing because that was like peak content at the time, right? Same with like Goldeneye doesn't hold up today. No shooters for N64 hold up today when you play them. Goldeneye does not hold up for today unless you're doing like a remaster or something like that. Because like the N64 like no controller required three hands to operate. But, but yeah, Resident Evil 4 has, they've demonstrated the parrying. It already came out. That's right, because it was this year. It was this month, right? It just yeah. barely came out. Yeah. There's new there finishing a remaster, moves. Not a remake. There's uh, new side quests, customization options, a revamped Ashley. I don't know what that means because I didn't play the original. I'm guessing they changed the way she looks, perhaps. Um. Oh, the bad NPCs in the game more than they were before. There's new weapons. There's more stealth stuff. Yeah, so a they, different they, boss. They fight. moved forward, so they they did what they did with the other ones. They revamped it. You know, you're yeah. not using the tank controls anymore. You have the parry mechanic. You have the ability to. Um, and that's good. Like, I think you. Do you have the ability to dodge? I don't remember. There's stealth, which is like you're saying is cool. Different mm -hmm. boss fights. They revamped. The biggest thing is they revamped Ashley's AI. Yeah. And that that was the reason. I think that's one of the reasons I quit out of four as quick as I did after that crash is because I know that that section sections where you escort Ashley are considered the worst part of that game and I just didn't want to deal with it. Yep. So I specifically just didn't. Um, I definitely am happy that they're revamping that. I feel like... I don't think it's a hot take. I think it's a pretty accurate take. Once Bioshock Infinite came out, it really showed that you can make AI companions not terrible. Yeah. And ever since then, like, it's good because I feel like a lot of people learned from that and they a lot of studios were like, oh, so you can actually make it. So it's not a nuisance. You don't have to make your AI companion a nuisance. And yeah, they can be interesting. Because like, I know productive. that some people are like, I don't really like Elizabeth that much. I think Elizabeth was a great character. I remember the <laughs> fact that she used to throw me ammo a lot when I was in hard situations. So I was like, screw it. Yep. Thank you. Um, which was better than an, an escort quest because it wasn't an escort quest. You yeah. had a companion through 90% of infinite, but it wasn't an escort quest. Maybe it was 80%. Yeah, I hate escort quests. And I know that this is still going to be a bit of escort quest esque for sure, but at least they revamped yeah, yeah. Ashley's AI. So it's not like she's just running off and dying. Yeah, that's what I mean. They like they suck. I understand why they exist, but they suck enough. Don't make them worse by making the AI just die if you look away for two seconds. Yeah. Speaking of remakes, Simpsons Hit and Run. He said that he want the the creator said that they wanted to, but they don't know what's actually happening. Yeah, they don't know if it'll ever happen. But the thing is, the community really wants it. And, like, I think they're going to get a remake either way because, like, the source code was leaked online. So I think there's enough cult fanatic about that game to get it. But I'll be honest, I remember the game on release. I honestly don't want a remake. I was never a Simpsons person, so I never really played it. I'm a huge classic Simpsons fan absolutely huge classic Simpsons fan and I think that's why the game sucks gotcha like I think the people who bought that game are like oh yeah no I totally love Simpsons my mom and dad let me watch Simpsons all the time <laughs> <laughs> and then like really what it was was their parents just had no idea what they like video games are for kids it's whatever yeah and then it was they, like, yeah so like I don't think are for kids. What the game was a buggy mess. It was fun like Tony Hawk Pro Skater was fun. Classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it wasn't it was like Grand Theft Auto Simpsons, right? Isn't that what people have said it is? It was a lot of fan service stuff. Okay. There oh there was a let's see, Simpsons PS2 game. Let's see what Favel remembers. Simpsons PS2 game. Simpsons game for PS2 that wasn't hit and run. That oh, was really good. I the, oh, it's just called The Simpsons Game. Interesting. Yeah, it's just called The Simpsons Game, Favel. And maybe that was good. I don't rem I don't remember that at all. Um, But 
Hit and Run, in my opinion, was not a good game. So, like, I don't... But, like, people love it. People absolutely went batshit crazy for that game. People are like, oh my god, this game was amazing. Like, I never played it. But again, I think more people were just like, my my parents totally let me watch Simpsons. (laughs) Like, I think it was more of that than anything else. Sure. Just like, you know... When, when you're young, it's like, oh, this video game had a boob in it. Like, I feel like that's <laughs> that's kind of what it... I think that's why people like that game. Yeah. Was just because they didn't think that maybe they should have it. Yeah. But, yeah. That's that's my thought on that. Um, oh, man. We only got one more topic left. We only got one more topic left, indeed. And we only got ten minutes left to, like, the schedule then. When we're technically supposed to end. Yeah, and wow. Nintendo this, Switch 2. This was, yeah, Nintendo Switch Yeah, switch 2. it up. I'm gonna go to browsing mode for this one. Again, that's too many browsers. Release date leaked online. Um, but I feel like this contradicts something they had... Where's the release date? At the end of the year. Model be released this year. It also come with a special graphical yeah. improvement DLC for some. So like December of this year, this holiday season kind of this thing. Is, isn't that well, once once Tears of a Kingdom coming out? June. Wow, that was very poor planning. Then they should have just released well, it on. This is the... exactly what they did with um, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was not originally just on Switch. No, but it came out. Of, oh yeah, you're. Oh, so you're thinking they're gonna release it I'm with this, and it's gonna thing. come out for yeah. W- Switch? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. people are gonna double buy it. It's just one. Of, I mean, Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo's always been some company that really likes money. And that's I mean, the way for them to get money. If the Switch you release, you release a game people really like on the first Switch, that they would potentially buy again, and then. You get double the money. You get money for both the Switch release and also the Switch 2 release. Yeah. I if where I'm at with it is I'm I'm unsure. I'm gonna have to wait and see how it actually performs. We'll see, because I feel like Switch release of this Switch is already pretty sluggish. Wait, even like, though the performance is still oh not great. The Switch fans usually focus on the other parts, such as battery performance, oh screen God, quality, ever, library, and sound quality. Have you I don't ever tried to play great. a current game on the Switch? The th- yeah, no. Games are terrible. It does not play smooth. Yeah, while PlayStation and Xbox gamers are mostly interested in higher frame rates and graphics quality, Switch users are more comfortable and s- are more want a more comfortable and stable experience. No, I think it's just that the intellectual properties I like don't come out on those other consoles. I think right? that's the only reason. I would say that... What, what is this? The nerdstash.com? I would say that you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know where the... I, I, mean, I don't know where you got your information from, Rayfels, apparently. It's, you know, but I, I would very... <laughs> Very vocally argue that nobody bought a Switch because they wanted a comfortable, stable experience. They bought it because the games that they wanted only come out on Switch. Mario Odyssey, great game. Can't like, came out on Switch. If, if all Nintendo games released on any other console or PC, I would not buy a Switch. You have a lot of people these days that just play... That just... Use it on... To do the Switch emulator, which is, you know... If you buy the game, then do that, sure. But people use Yuzu a lot. I, If it's only available on console, I'll buy the console. And I'll play it on the console to get the authentic experience. Oh, sure. I'm just saying that people yeah. who already own a Switch sometimes will buy the game and then just play it on emulator. Because yeah. That's how bad the frame drops are. Which is, it sucks that that's... The console should be able to handle the game. Yeah. This isn't the old days of, you know, modes mode 7 graphics yeah the that that were laggy on purpose and people were fine with it we're, we're past the point where having a two frames a second is okay like you know, 
Do you remember Breath of the Wild on Wii U? Yeah, like that was bad. That was the a frame like, rates for those games were bad. Whether or not I did at at some point, I went back and I played through Breath of the Wild on an emulator with sixty frames per second, and it was great. I got it the day it released on Switch, and a buddy of like, mine got the game for Wii U, and he was like, "God, the graphics are bad." I was like, "No, that's a I Wii U both, thing." I played both versions, even on Switch though. If you went over any of those wide expanses with Breath of the Wild, it would it would chug. Oh yeah, it would way worse on Wii U though. <laughs> oh yeah, no, but I'm saying is you still that 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 game was made for that system. You yeah. shouldn't be having that many graphical issues even on the Switch. Oh no, but. On the Wii U, it was even worse. Like, the game oh, no. just should not I, have released for Wii U at all. I have played both versions. Yeah. It Trust was bad. It was bad, for sure. And we were there to witness the bad. Yeah. But hopefully they... Like, I'm not even looking for 4K. If you can give me 1080p 60 frames per second... and a I'm okay with this. And a, just, like that. just a better, like, over, games. like, way more powerful than it needs to be to do that. Yeah. Like. I would take that. I'd, I'd rather spend, like, the Steam Deck can do it. Yeah. Oh, no, it's definitely doable. It's just the fact that they can get away with selling a console that's underpowered to play their games. Mm-hmm. Because people will just buy it. Yeah. If they took any notes from Steam Deck, it could be good. Yeah. We'll see. They probably didn't. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Fair. We both know it's true. Anything you want to add, Cal? I got nothing no. else. I think I'm good. Cool. I I'm good. Everybody come back Been tomorrow. We'll do some water deep stuff together. Do some... Very interesting pre-made ventures. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. And then on Sunday, we'll do some end of time. And then on Wednesday, some prisoner 13. It'll be great. So we'll yeah. see you guys then. Yeah. Goodbye, friends. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah.